under the IWA Young Water Professionals. Um, there's really no point being too formal amongst a company of friends, but we would like to remind you of a few housekeeping rules before we get started with the program. And we're going to do that while we are accepting more participants who are joining us today. Firstly, as you may have noticed, this event is being recorded. It will be available on demand on the IWA website, including all of the presentation slides, which we trust the speakers have secured copyright permissions for. Moreover, the IWA, um, uh, the, 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 the speakers' um, opinions, conclusions, and recommendations are present, presented by the speakers today are the sole responsibility of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect IWA opinion. Please, we do encourage everyone to be as active as possible on the chat box. We'd love to hear your thoughts while we are going through the program. If you have any questions or clarifications at all, please, you know how to do this on Zoom. Um, please also feel free to introduce yourself briefly on the chat, state your name, your role, the country you're, you're joining from, and um, why don't you add a fun fact about yourself, <laughs> just, to, just to make it interesting. Another thing that we encourage everyone to do is to keep their cameras open if your internet bandwidth allows. Um, goes without saying that if you're not speaking, please go on mute so as not, not to distract our speakers. For our speakers, there is no need to share slides because we already have all of your presentations as you have sent them. Right, um, let's get down to a few introductions. Um, my name is Yang Villa. I am one of the members of the YWP Steering Committee and I will be one of your hosts and moderators today. And I will be with Isabella, who everyone here knows. Isabella, of course, is the IWA Membership Engagement Officer. We have invited for today three fantastic speakers and panelists. You will get to know each of them uh, in a bit, but to mention who they are, they are Kulud, Mahmoud, and Maria, who are all joining us from diff different parts of the world as is everyone else. And we'll have more introductions from each of them later on. At this point, I we, we want to show you first what we're going to do today, and that is um, just a brief overview of the uh, the YWP community as it stands um, at this year's end, but also to talk about a few of the conference reports that some of the YWPs have attended in the recent months, and that will be facilitated by our three speakers and panelists. At the end of that, we'll have time to just have a quick chat, Q&A, and open forum with our fantastic speakers. At this point, I will now turn you over to Isabella, who will talk about IWA and the YWP community. Thank you, Yang. Thank you for this. So uh, as Yang mentioned, I'm the one responsible for the Young Water Professionals within the International Water Association. And what I prepared today is just uh, a brief overview about what is the International Association, but also how do we work with this amazing uh, young water professionals community? And the reason that we decided to do this is because we have um, attendees that are not yet members, but it's also good to, to remind all the, the young people that are working in the water sector about what IWA is offering and how we are supporting this engagement about young water professionals in the water sector. So, First of all, what is IWA? What is the International Water Association? Here we say that IWA is by members and for members because we are a membership-based organization and we are recognized as an international reference and a source of knowledge and focus on creating uh, innovative and solutions that are sustainable for uh, water resources. We have this amazing global community of academics, um, uh, people working in the industry, young water professionals, among others that are really uh, passionate about creating the change in the water sector. So we aim to achieve and to, to be this catalyst for innovation, knowledge, um, sharing and recognizing the best practice that we have in the sector, uh, what other organizations are doing, and also sharing the opinion of the water leaders that we have. Uh, 
um, in, in the sector. And for those that are not aware, IWA works with a uh, four years um, time, timeline and frame in terms of strategic goals. Our currently one uh, started in 2019 and will go until 2024. So we went, we aim to create this engaged and balanced uh, membership, being the source of this leading uh, edge work knowledge creating space for professionals to exchange their knowledge, being this bridge between research uh, and practice, and of course, supporting the implementation of all the, um, the SDGs. And we achieved this uh, through this system approach. Uh, as you can see, we work all around the globe. We have um, members, that work via the specialist groups, the clusters, they are attending the forums, the test groups, um, the YWP country chapters, the government members, and they all come from different um, uh, areas of the water sector. So university consultants, regulators, um, water industry utilities, and we connect them via our platform, our programs, our projects, our journals and, and books and other uh, publications that we pr produce, of course. And our amazing Congress, that the last one we held in Copenhagen. And I see that some of the, the members today attended uh, in person and they enjoy it uh, as much as possible. And in terms of where we are located, as you can see, we are all around the globe <laughs> and our members are really connected with the water resources um, in their region and and how they can produce this change uh, and impact the water sector just uh, some information about our our members in terms of the active members that we have the corporate members uh, the university the government members and if of um, also the, the network members. And I receive a lot of questions in terms of, um, Isabella, why should I become a member? Why should I be uh, involved in activities? Why should I be a volunteer uh, in part of a chapter? And I, I try to, to summarize information with this engagement journey. So since they start until, start, until you become a leader uh, in the, association but also in the water sector so uh, if you're not a, a member you don't have access to to propose um, communities and and to represent IWA nationally but as soon as you become this you can join this leadership partners that we have and being responsible for the changes that you want to achieve in, in the water uh, in the water sector. And in terms of the communities, uh, I know that most of you are interested in, in, in the young water professionals uh, community that we have, but I uh, also want to highlight that we have the government members, the distinguished fellows, the specialist groups, and we see these communities really connected and I, I really um, support uh, the young water professionals get involved with in the other communities that we have with IWA, because I believe that this is the way that they can uh, influence our, our decisions and also helping us to understand how we can improve and get better in terms of supporting and promoting this meaningful engagement of uh, young water professionals. And without further delays, I want to highlight uh, the community and also the role that the steering committee plays on this. As you can see here in, in the slides, uh, we have this amazing uh, uh, steering committee that was recently elected and they are the one helping us with our mission, our mission to empower YWPs, but also to, to develop this brand and network that really creates a high value uh, opportunities for YWPs. To, to participate in the water sector. And just a quick reminder, IWA considers young water professional, all the members that I 
that are aged 35 um, and, and are below. And they come from this multidisciplinary backgrounds on this. And if there is some questions about structure, how we engage then, uh, we have this uh, framework that I'm showing here in this slide. In, the, in, in this slide, and as you can see, in the national level, we have the country chapters. Ooh, I recently checked it; we have 38, 38 IWA branded chapters. So you can see the impact that we have our around the world. And then, in, in the international level, we have the steering committee that I just mentioned that are helping us to 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 understand the needs and uh, how how we can enhance this new generation of young water professionals. Um, so a quick, um, all the chapters that we have, as I mentioned, we have 38 IWA uh, branded chapters. And I also added some of the photos from our uh, recent events, recent in-person events that were held in, in Copenhagen. And we have the photos from the Emerging Water Leaders and our uh, YWP dinner, and in Copenhagen. If you are part of the Young Water Professionals Community, you can join the chapters, you can join the government members committee, uh, you can network with members via the IWA Connect platform, you can apply um, to be part of the steering committee, the Young Water Professionals Steering Committee, join their subcommittees, um, engage in organizing some of, of our events, and connect with senior professionals. So there are a lot of opportunities for you. If you want to know more, feel free to reach out to me. I have shared my, my uh, contact details below. Feel free to, to reach out in this. And in, in terms of uh, recognizing the, the, world, uh, the work that young people are carrying out in the water sector, I'd like to remind all of you about the uh, IWA Youth Leadership Awards that we really try to, to highlight the best uh, of what young water professionals are doing. And this is just uh, one example from Dr. Siddhartha Roy that won the, the award in 2020. So, Young, I will hand over to you now. Thanks a lot, Isabella, for that overview. It's been an exciting year for us, and I can, um, I'm can i thrilled that we are entering a new year. Um, hopefully, new members, more ch country chapters, and the next time we do these get-togethers, um, there will be a lot more exchanges. Um, our next speaker, the first of our three, is Kolud Charfi who is from uh, WWF North Africa and the Water Youth Network. And Kolud will be talking to us about COP27, which, he, as you all know, has uh, wrapped up a few months ago, a few weeks ago. Kolud, yes. over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Isabella. And thank you, Yang, for having me today. It is really great pleasure for me to speak about um, COP27 <laughs> and the water outcomes in particular. So um, I will try to be brief and um, give simple, uh, let's say, outcomes. But before doing that, um, I will try to mention some more general points or more, more general uh, outcomes that uh, generated from COP27 this year. So the discussions that or uh, the two weeks during COP were dominated by a few themes. Uh, the most important ones were uh, loss and damage and the creation of funds related to loss and damage. And then there is the Cronivia Joint Work on Agriculture uh, and also the Mitigation Work Program. So uh, these are the couple of themes that dominated COP27. And um, by the end of COP, which, um, yeah, which ended, I think, COP27 in Sharm el Sheikh is either the longest or the second longest COP in the history of all COPs. So it was prolonged for, I think, uh, I think for 24, uh, for 40 hours. So it ended um, two days later than the usual uh, closing date. And um, on the day of its, uh, or one of the um, main outcomes that generated from COP27 is um 
the creation or the creation of funds related to uh, loss and damage. So um, developing countries have been seeking financial assistance for loss and damage, uh, which is the money needed to rescue uh, or rebuild the physical and social infrastructure impacted by extreme weather events. So during this COP, there was an agreement on a fund related to loss and damage which is, um, as we all uh, know, is a major milestone. So, um, however, there is no official agreement uh, on yet uh, or on how the finance should be provided or on how um, it should come from. I think there will be a transitional committee to make recommendation regarding this at COP28 next year. So we will see uh, regarding this. Uh, and another point is uh, that COP27 also finalized the mitigation work program and they also um, agreed on a, an extra four years on, on the um, Corinivia joint work on agriculture. So now back to water. Um, so for water, um, the, the biggest outcome or the biggest milestone is that for the first time ever, water uh, was included in the final declaration, uh, which is the Sharm el-Sheikh implementation plan. So um, in the declaration, they recognize the critical role of protecting and conserving and restoring water systems and water-related ecosystem in delivering climate adaptation benefits and co-benefits. And they also urged parties to further integrate water into adaptation efforts. However, as you can see, water was only included within the adaptation discussion. It wasn't mentioned in any uh, mitigation um, um, discussions. Next. Also, um, yeah, so also related to water, not directly, but uh, under the agriculture theme, there was the establishment of the four-year Sharm el-Sheikh joint work on implementation, uh, implementation of climate action on agriculture and food security, which uh, relates indirectly to, um, to water. So this is related to uh, the official outcomes of COP27. Other, um, let's say, important events or uh, important outcomes related to water is, um, next slide please, is the, um, that there was the first ever uh, water day. So for the official COP27 featured a special day on water with water related discussions across the conference. So this is this is something, um, this, is, uh, this is considered a milestone for water um, as it is the first ever water day. There was also the water pavilion uh, the water pavilion was um, was big during this COP. It has many uh, sessions and many events. They were organized by also um, a lot of uh, a lot of partners, and it features a lot of high level sessions. So the opening of the water uh, pavilion was um, done jointly by the Kingdom of the Netherlands and the uh, Republic of Tajikistan. And so we can see that this um, shows that there is uh, shows the link to the UN uh, 2023 Water Conference. So the official opening of the Water Pavilion was um, a high level ceremony on itself. It featured the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of the Netherlands and the President of Tajikistan. Uh, next, so this um, yes, so this is um, yeah going on to the. To the main initiatives related to water that took or the, that were created or that were launched dur during COP27. So uh, a big number of them were either launched in the water pavilion or during the water day on the 14th. And among the most important one is the um, an initiative launched by the COP27 presidency in partnership with the MORD, with the WMO. So it's an action on water adaptation and resilience initiative. So uh, this initiative will champion inclusive cooperation to address water-related challenges and solution across climate change adaptation. And it will uh, aim to create successful outcome uh, at the uh, UN Water Conference. So the AWARE initiative will focus on three priority, uh, priority actions. It will aim to decrease water losses worldwide and improve water supply. Uh, purpose and, uh, propose and support implementing uh, mutually agreed policy and methods for cooperative uh, water-related adaptation actions, and then promote cooperation and uh, interlinkages between water and climate. Another other uh, initiatives that were uh, also launched is the next piece is the Food and Agriculture for Sustainable Transform uh, Transformation Initiative, which is the FAST initiative. Next slide. 
Um, so it was launched by FAO and its goal is to implement concrete action that would result in improving the quality and, uh, and quantity of climate finance contribution to transform agriculture and food system by 2030. Uh, so the first initiative will be a multi-stakeholder partnership acting as an accelerator to transform agri-food system to deliver uh, triple wins, so for people, climate, and for nature. Other, um, let's say, um, initiatives that were launched, next slide, is there was the launch of the African Cities Water Adaptation Fund, and then the, the G7 countries launched, launched the Global Shield Program with more than uh, $200 million in initial funding for the insurance and disaster uh, protection following floods, drought, and hurricane, hurricanes in vulnerable countries. So these are the um, initial or the main outcomes related to water. They are not uh, they are not a lot related to other themes, but uh, the fact that water uh, is featured for the first time into the final declaration is a big success, and we need to build on that. Uh, the fact that for the first time also that we had um, an official or the um, a water uh, water day is also a success. Um, also during COP, there was a lot of build up or there were a lot of sessions uh, that linked COP27 to the uh, UN 2023 Water Conference. So this was also um, great. But like, like I said, um, there are not a lot of uh, outcomes and let's hope that we can build on those for the next COPs to come. Thank you. Thanks, good. Makes me um, firstly uh, want want to and wish that I was also there to have witnessed all of these exciting news and updates, but thank you for delivering those great news to us and, and um, synthesizing what that means to the water sector. We're going to reserve, I'm sure, the burning questions that we've got from the participants for later. Um, and we do encourage the participants to please type their questions on the chat box. Um, Isabella and myself, we will be uh, taking charge of making note of those questions and raising them at the Q&A. Let's move on now to our next uh, presenter. Maria will be talking about the Groundwater Summit with the theme, Making the Invisible Visible. Maria. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Isabella <laughs> and uh, International Water Association for its invitation. It's a pleasure to be here with you all today. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the Groundwater Summit, Making the Invisible Visible. Uh, that was the first uh, summit for groundwater, so it is a very important subject. Now I'm going to introduce the theme, please, next. Um, so uh, this year was the year of groundwater. A task force was made by uh, UN Water and it was co-coordinated by UNESCO and International Groundwater Resource Assessment Center. Uh, UNESCO coordinated the organization and participated in a series of key events related to groundwater during this year, uh, events that were related to water or environment that could be a, a instance to talk and to debate about groundwater. And uh, the call for this year uh, started at the World Water Day in a very important report was launched. This one that I thought I printed the, the cover, it is on my right uh, side, groundwater making the invisible visible. This report is important because if you wanna know uh, a little bit about the state of art of groundwater, uh, you need to read and see this report because it comprehends important information, updates, and research collected in that regard, regarding water, uh, groundwater, and uh, their uh, experts. So, next please. Uh, introducing uh, the team, the, the thematic sessions, and the event, uh, the end of 
This year, making the invisible visible ended with the groundwater summit that happened last week at UNESCO in Paris. I participated in person and it was a huge experience. It was a three days event, but the first day of the event was a site uh, event with uh, several round tables composed by experts, uh, hydrologists, uh, members of agents and youth. And this is very important to highlight because the opportunity to engage youth and the experts, uh, the members of agencies, politicians, uh, members of delegations, it is an important way to move forward uh, and uh, achieve important uh, actions and projects for the future of groundwater. And the other uh, two days were for main topics uh, related to groundwater. The first one, uh, data and information, development capacity, innovation, finance, and governance. And the second day, thematic, uh, sessions uh, like regional dialogues, uh, transmodary groundwaters, and uh, in the closing ceremony that it was very important too. So next, please. Uh, the the main points that I could uh, talk to you about today it is that the event was composed by UNESCO delegations, especially the. Uh, delegation from Indonesia because they are going to host the World Water Forum and experts, multi stakeholders of water sector, civil society, also uh, youth. And the, pa the panels aim to inform these participants and alert them to the importance of groundwater, the experience, uh, exchange experience from all over the world and the conditions and use of these waters in different places of the world and summarize all these events that happened all during all this year. As uh, we already know, groundwater is 98% of the liquid fresh water available in the world and also has a great potential to provide uh, benefits and it is a key uh, to climate, uh, climate change adaption. So thinking, uh, this, uh, key uh, thinking about these key points, another, uh, uh, there are another points that I could highlight. Uh, all the, the participants of the panels recognized the importance of groundwater but despite of all uh, the advances of this, this year and the last decades regarding groundwater, these waters is still uh, poorly understood. And uh, saying that groundwater is not visible, in, it is uh, pretty clear by the title of the event, making things more visible. It is a, a clear point, but a huge challenge because provide knowledge and capacity to manage groundwater, it is a challenge when we are talking about a resource that we can see easily. And the panel of capacity highlighted the importance to create measurement standards to the same reservoir or uh, several aquifers or groundwaters, and this is also a big challenge. How to create measurement and tools to uh, these uh, measurement standards, and uh, when we are talking about a resource that it is so specific and uh, that we can see uh, easily and uh, and create tools for it. So the, uh, the panel of data and information attested something that we, uh, that uh, I thought I worked with groundwater in the last, I've been working with groundwater in the last few years. And it is pretty 
clear for us that uh, we have a lack of data and information for groundwaters, national and international instance, and this must change because we can uh, achieve uh, policies, concrete policies, public policies, and engage the different sectors and levels that I re require to uh, manage these waters if we don't know the, the data, the information, we don't have uh, data that, that it is compatible with the reality. So the innovation and finance panels concluded that groundwater must be a priority. In the context of growing uh, water scarcity in many, in many parts of the world, the vast potential of groundwater and the need to manage it carefully can, be, can no longer be overlooked. And this is uh, something that we must change. So, Next slide, please. Uh, so, so if you are thinking, talking about uh, the, the, the things that we must change and uh, policies and thinking about governance, uh, groundwater governance, this uh, re precisely requires uh, transforming uh, the conclusions of all these panels of innovation, data, finances, uh, and uh, all the discussions of the summit in transforming them in public policies. And this is very difficult to happen. It is not a, uh, an easy uh, task. So uh, I will talk just a little bit about a panel that is very important for me, especially because I work with this uh, subject that the, the, the are the transboundary groundwaters. And this topic, I think, it is a, a good example of the groundwaters treatment because we have 40, 468 identified transboundary aquifers and aquifer systems all over the world, but we only have six formal arrangements for them. And we also have a new conversation and arrangement for Mauritania and Senegal Aquifer. But this uh, the scenario must change because uh, it is a huge difference between the identified transboundary aquifers and aquifer systems and the formal arrangements. And we uh, can conclude that uh, the groundwaters are still, uh, uh, they are still uh, a second level in, uh, instance of international agenda. And this must change. This is one of the topics of the summit that was debated in a lot of the, the, the panels. So my uh, final considerations of the, the whole theme and the, the, the summit is not. Yeah. Thank you. It is uh, the year uh, to make the visible visible was an important initiator to groundwaters really emerge in international agenda. But uh, this the summit as a closure of the year, bringing together participants from different areas of the globe from, uh, from uh, different sectors and uh, from civil society, uh, agencies, uh, delegations, it, youth, it is an important uh, way to seek real commitment with these waters. The participation and the space give to, uh, given to the youth, it, is, it was an important step to look forward uh, at the challenge regard, regarding groundwaters and also to achieve concrete actions because the youth it is, the, is the future of these waters. And the summit complied 
uh, with uh, with the proposal to take a unison speech until the UN Water Conference next year. I think this was the main goal of the summit, create a statement that uh, all the participants could commit with it and take uh, that uh, that concerns to the UN Water Conference next year. But also, we uh, I saw a few challenges that we need to look if we are trying to uh, change the reality of groundwater. They in uh, some of them are treat groundwater and surface water management together because in the end of the day, surface or groundwater, we are talking about water. So the management of these waters must be treated together. The participation of subnational actors, it is essential if you are, if we are talking about uh, groundwaters because the public policies and politics that emerge from this conference, like the summit, UN Water Conference, they are all going to be applied at the local level. And if, you, if we are trying to change this reality from the international to the local level, we need to uh, count with the participation of subnational actors. So this was my brief presentation of the theme. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. That was very enlightening and a quick summary of what happened. I'm sure there were a lot of interesting discussions shared during the Groundwater Summit. And thank you, Inesh, for sharing some of those notes also on the chat. We'll have more time later during the Q&A to go through all of these insights. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to drop them on the chat box. Our final speaker slash panelist for today is Mahmoud, uh, and he will be talking about the groundwater family community on the global watership, a global water partnership toolbox. Mahmoud, uh, many thanks. I trust yeah. your, there you go. Yes, yes. Thank, thank you so much for the introduction. And, and also, I'm really glad that I managed to connect to, to hear the, the amazing summary of the summit, which is something, of course, like made me really, really happy uh, because it took us almost 18 months to, um, to do all the preparations and it, it really uh, worked very well. Um, and I'm happy in specific to hear about that the that the youth participation was was quite something that people would be happy to 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 tell about after the summit because it I was like I think I, I was to be considered the only uh, youth part uh, advocating for having more and more engagement for our um, groundwater youth network and uh, as you know the groundwater youth network of UNESCO started in uh, in, in Dakar. Uh, earlier this year in, in March, and uh, since then they have been doing really an amazing job, and they they started doing all the preparations uh, during the summit uh, throughout the the, the the hub, the the youth forum itself. Uh, amazing session it was very diverse. So glad to hear. Thank you so much. But um, yes, here today I'm I'm I don't, I'm not talking anymore about the summit itself, but I'm talking about one of the. Uh, outputs that we are glad to announce as well uh, during this session, which is our collaboration with J GWP uh, regarding the groundwater community that was just released um, on the groundwater, um, uh, the, the uh, GWP's toolbox uh, platform. We we managed this uh, UNESCO HP and uh, our category two center IGRAC to launch this uh, um, community during the um, the summit itself we launched during the pre-summit day, and then it has been going through uh, throughout that three days of the summit itself, uh, which I believe we were glad to announce it because it's um, it's somewhere we can uh, again connect uh, what we are calling the groundwater family, and uh, as as you know the the, the platform is uh, is um, is interesting with some new ideas where we can actually have something to engage with other practitioners in the groundwater uh, family itself being a connecting tool like you can you can call it that the, the, I don't know the Twitter of groundwater or the Twitter of water 
family. And that's why it's, it's really interesting that we can all share ideas, share discussions, uh, do some surveys. So if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, as, you, as you know, the, the toolbox itself, it's really interesting because it, for me, it connects, it teaches, and it gives you an opportunity to explore different uh, resources that we're having. We cannot share all our ideas or our uh, community. You cannot have a space that everybody can just drop their ideas wherever they are and hear some feedback uh, from each of the water different fields. But however, now we want really to have something for the groundwater family. That's why we created this um, plat the specific group within the, uh, the, the toolbox. And it's just for me, it most importantly, it connects the water practitioners and the groundwater practitioners around the globe. You can feel free to, to drop any uh, message to anybody. I believe it has been going. It's very new. Uh, as you know, it's less than a week. Uh, but I think we will really depend on the, on the platform um, soon again, like starting, of course, in the next year, throughout the whole 20, uh, 2023 and 24, uh, because we, are, we believe now we're having our own tool to to communicate directly and to push some announcements to our uh, people. Uh, that being said, um, as, as you know, we, during the, the summit, if any, any one of you connected, we used an, an interesting tool for online participants to make sure that engagement is, is well uh, supported to the, the Hoover. And Hoover is, is, of course, a software that we use to engage between the, the in-presence participants and online ones, but it has a very short time span, which is three months. So after three months, everything will be closed, unfortunately, because it's not our UNESCO tool. It's, it's the paid uh, tool or feature that we are using. So that's why we're calling now on all the participants that, that uh, who have already engaged enough. It's still, you have two months if you wish to enjoy a bit like the discussion that we had, see the questions and answers that we had on the Hoover platform, but please make sure to connect directly to the uh, groundwater uh, toolbox of uh, the groundwater family. If you can uh, go to the next slide, please. Uh, mainly, mainly the this is the the features and functions of the toolbox where you can interact and exchange. You can share case studies. You can share your papers, your articles. You can directly send messages to the the, the big figures that you wish to connect with um, in in the groundwater field. Um, I I believe we sent them an invitation already during the summit. We're we're re sending them invitations again while we're sending the thank you uh, messages uh, for attending the summit. Of course, it also allows you. To, to, to access the documents as well as downloading them whenever needed. Uh, we will keep also up uploading that with our news uh, information, our uh, communication messages, our outcomes and main messages uh, came out from the, from the summit itself. Of course, we'll be posting some of the um, the main information about the videos, the, 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 the joint messages and the speeches whenever possible. So please make sure that you can connect and it's pretty very easy, straightforward. In the last slide, please, you can just scan the QR code, join, connect to the family, and uh, or just global uh, water partnership toolbox. You can search and then search on the groundwater family. Easy register takes you like two minutes and then you're you will be there. There are some discussions that we already initiated and we will keep posting just as a follow-up to the summit. Of course, it's taking some time. We're still recovering from the preparation of the summit, but I believe very soon we'll be activating uh, this platform being the only platform where it can gather all the groundwater family. That was all, and I would be glad to answer any questions whenever needed and happy to meet you all. Thank you uh, so much, Isabel, for uh, um, inviting me to talk here. Thank you. Thank you, Mahmoud. Um, that sounds like a very exciting initiative indeed. And I will, I myself will be um, registering as a user to join that community, that family, as you as you call it. Um, we now come to our Q&A portion, and I see a couple of questions being dropped on the chat box. Um, if I could kindly invite all of our participants to go um, on screen, um, turn on their cameras if they're able so that we can all see each other while we do this um, chat. Awesome, thanks everyone. Great to see you all, great to see familiar faces. Let's get cracking then, shall we, Isabella, starting with the question that we had for um, Kalud, this was from Anik. Um, Anik, are you here? 
I can see him here. Yes. Yes. He is. Yes. <laughs> I am here. Yeah. And Nick, feel free to open your your mic and and do your question. Go for it, Nick. Hello, Isabella. Hello, Yang. Hi, hello to everyone in the meeting. Um, congratulations for this seminar. This is one very needed seminar for the people who weren't able to attend the events in person. Um, a lot of the talks had been lately been going on in Pakistan and likely uh, low income countries about the lost repatriation fund. But what really matters is who are the actors that are going to implement that loss reparation fund? Uh, is it going to be the youth, of course, keeping in mind that the next that this fund would take a decade or a couple of decades to proceed to its full maturity? So would it be the youth from the very beginning or would it be the same old actors uh, who are in the policy making process? Or is there a hint of um, engaging knowledge bodies on this? Uh, what's what's your take on this, Halu? I would really like to hear that. Yes. Um, so loss and damage has been, I think it has been uh, raised by developing countries since 30 years now. And it's only during this COP that they have, um, th that we have an outcome, that loss and damage has officially been put into the agenda and that we have an outcome. The process itself has been, it was a really two complicated weeks uh, for loss and damage. It was really hard to reach um, a decision. The same for um, like all other um, important themes uh, for COP27. So the decision was taken. So the outcome uh, is there. There will be a creation of fund for loss and damage. However, there is no, um, let's say, further information. There will be a transitional committee that will be created. And this transitional committee uh, will uh, make recommend recommendation during COP28 on where this uh, fund could come from, where it where it can go, when what who, or who can be the um, the partners or the funders or uh, the partnerships that could be created, where that money can come from. So there is no um, let's say uh, specific or clear information regarding to this, and definitely there is no information or uh, there is no clear role for uh, for youth, of course. So it's gonna at this stage there is no I can't give you a clear answer if, we, if I can say so but hopefully during this the course of year the presidency can um, make some more action they can give us more information uh, regarding this but I mean for us as youth maybe we can um, because loss and damage I, I think it was put on the agenda and we reached an outcome because there was a lot of uh, pressure and there was a lot of action from civil society so for us youth we can do the same in order to be included in um, in the discussion or in the actions thanks thanks Glude. I see two thumbs up from Anik that seems to answer the question I if before we go to glorious question if I could just ask Maria to comment on that as well um, you mentioned that there were a few bits about the youth and the role of the youth during the Groundwater Summit. Um, can you briefly describe what you uh, saw or heard from the summit are the key um, opportunities for um, young water professional engagement? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yes, sure. Uh, Yang, I can talk uh, briefly about my experience seeing uh, the participation of youth. Uh, I, I saw the, the panel of youth in the uh, uh, thematic sessions, and it was uh, really interesting to see they uh, talking about their, in, their issues, their uh, expectations to participate in the uh, with the stakeholders and the actions that are going to be made at national and international level to groundwater and uh, they call it uh, all the, the participants of the the summit to engage with him with them and uh, to create new networks because they really need this uh, this network to to establish uh, the this exchange of experience, informations, and projects. And I saw the 
the leaders and the delegations really inspired by their uh, their uh, speeches because they are trusting the, this uh, youth uh, for new uh, new ways to to approach uh, the the subject of groundwater. So they had this whole uh, session only to uh, to tell the, their expectations, their projects, and uh, what are the, what they are developing uh, and discussing regarding groundwater. And it was a, uh, an opportunity to exchange information and create a, a new network. Uh, I hope this uh, will continue in the next summits and conferences. Indeed, that sounds like um, where the groundwater family and GWP tools and platform will, will come in. Yes, yes, I think so. I believe we have a question for you, Maria, from Gloria. Okay. Gloria, you can take yourself off mute and ask your question. Thank you so much for this presentation. and. Um, now the question is in in Nairobi specifically, we are having a very large population, water scarcity, and poor infrastructure. This has seen a rise in the number of boreholes being dug in order to supply water for this population. And I'm guessing the situation is the same in most urban areas in developing countries. So is there a reason to be worried about the sustainability of borehole water and uh, safety of borehole water? Uh regarding the, the, the summit, uh, because I didn't hear. Yeah, the summit. The, in the summit, the, the, the subject of sustainability in scarcity. Uh, this is uh, something that was addressed and uh, really emphasized during the whole session, the, 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 the role of groundwater in situations like uh, this in, in Nairobi, and uh, this was the main uh, goal of the summit to, uh, let, uh, to let the, the participants know and be aware of the, the role of groundwater in the situations that it, it is, that are going to be us uh, usual in the next uh, years in generations. So uh, try to uh, make them aware of the situation and uh, how can we, knowing uh, and recognizing this, what can we do to change this reality uh, they, uh, with the groundwater as a base of the solution? In, in the situation. So I think uh, I saw uh, the discussions like this in the sense and the sustainability and the role of, of groundwater in climate change adaptation and uh, this uh, situation. I don't know if I answered your question. Thank you, Maria, and feel free uh, anyone to follow that up with additional questions or clarifications. Um, I'd like to, uh, Isabella, do you have any additional questions or follow up for our speakers? Um, mainly, I do have like comments on, on both events because IWA was in, involved in, in both. Um, during COP, we had this side event. Uh, that we organized that we attended online, but some of our members were there in person and our uh, partners organizations. Uh, so we follow up all the discussion that we have there. And um, regarding uh, the UNESCO groundwater, it was the same. I was following everything that was happening and I was glad to see that both events that they touch in this issue about engaging youth in different levels. Uh, from from or organizing that events, but also to have like a specific place for them. Talu just mentioned in, in the chat regarding the the youth day and how they had this 
special envoy for youth during COP. But um, Mahmoud mentioned during his presentation about the, the youth uh, forum that was held during the, the Groundwater Summit. And this all highlights that the water sector understands that youth is important, but now the question lies on how we unite these different uh, stakeholders, consider that youth is also a stakeholder, but also how we mean, meaningfully engage them in, in the discussions. I think that is a matter uh, now about how, and I'm really looking forward to see how the, the Tajik and the Netherlands government, they are pushing this during the UN uh, 2023 Water Conference. That would be something to look forward to, how the youth are making a stand in the UN Water Conference and what actually comes out of that. As Anit puts in the chat, hopefully the next years will be tokenism free um, for the youth. youth. And, and, and isn't that the role really of, of the YWP? Um, network. I, I want to turn to Mahmoud for a second and um, get him to talk about how UNESCO is doing that um, on a broader scale, not just for um, involving them through the global uh, family for groundwater. Um, what? How else can can the youth uh, be involved with UNESCO's efforts um, with respect to water security, Mahmoud? Uh, yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Now we cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've been lost. <laughs> the Groundwater Youth Network, which uh, it was a marsh, and uh, actually the idea behind this launch is that whenever we had an opportunity to engage youth uh, through groundwater being like, because I'm, I'm working in the groundwater section of UNESCO, and then whenever we had an opportunity for youth engagement, especially during the, the forum, because during the forum where... Mahmoud, we are losing you. If you can hear this, um... we had three main uh, specialized, like hydrogeology, uh, well connected. I would. Say. Yeah, can you hear me now? Is... Yes, is that's it better now? Can you hear me? No, we lost you. <laughs> is it better now or still? Now it's better. It's better okay, now. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, sorry for that. My internet connection, like, is really not good now. Uh, but I was saying that we, we faced during the car that uh, we were having, we were organizing three main side events and we were having a challenge to get some youth to join our sessions as part of the youth uh, like engagement somehow. And then we called for, uh, for some participation and we only received like general water specialists, like young experts, but we never found any hydrogeologists and that was a really challenge. So that's basically due to our lack of connections, I would say, like we didn't manage to reach people enough. And this is where we decided like, okay, we need to have a specialized network on groundwater as, as a pilot. We wanted to pilot whether this network would work or not in the upcoming year. And, and then we like, the, I, I, I proposed the idea to my super senior ad, um, management and then they approved it immediately. They launched the, the network itself. And I think since March until now, they have been really, really doing a great job. We managed to secure some funding for them because they are really active so that they can participate as much as possible and they are reporting on their activities they they managed to just launch this youth forum during the summit itself they were there in cup they were there in world water week um, so it's actually it's i think it's the drive where we can see some engagement like we're trying to pull the first string and then we found them, they are self-driving themselves. Like, I, I won't say that UNESCO is doing anything than just offering the opportunity. And I think they are really uh, getting it and they are really engaging enough. They are very active. They are everywhere uh, as possible. And, they, uh, and I, I believe whenever I'm reporting back to my senior management on their progress, they, they give me more opportunity, they give me more funding to allow them for more, better and better participation. So I think it's only that we, we need the, this door. So UNESCO started with this small pilot example. I think my, uh, my annual review or evaluation for the network will be in March. So I'm having pretty good report for the first year. I think that is giving a lot bigger chance for more 
youth participation within the water field in the next year. So I believe by the forum, I think we are also, we invited the director who, um, the, the director of the 10th World Water Forum in Bali was there in the summit. We had a very nice, uh, interesting talks with them. They were on the panel because we did this intergenerational panel. They promised that the youth will be having pretty large role during the next forum. So I think it's going there. It's just we need to keep pushing, uh, keep asking for um, opportunities and keep uh, uh, keep pushing. Yeah, keep pushing our people because it's all those seniors. Like, there is an opportunity, but we need to ask them. We need to know when and how to ask. And uh, we need to propose the ideas because whenever we're having a, a finalized proposal, whenever the proposal to initiate a, a network for youth was ready, it just got an immediate response. So I think it's always like we need to be prepared to uh, intervene immediately. And I invite you all also to please, like if you're having time, try to join the network because the network of groundwater of UNESCO is not actually an organization in itself. It's a network of networks. We're having this steering committee, like Isabella knows pretty much about how it works. We, it's, it's, we are nominating one from each youth organization working on water in the steering committee. We're having this monthly meeting where everybody from each organization are are uh, meeting and they are they are deciding on their next programs like the, the the annual programs then they are seeing opportunities we're having a lot of committees uh, we are more than 900 youth a uh, young expert now i think it's it's going pretty well and uh, thank you i think that's all. thanks mahmoud um it, it, you're absolutely correct in saying that sometimes the most that we can do is to offer these opportunities or knock on the doors of of senior leaders to say, this is what we want to happen. And that's exactly the work that you are doing as well as with Isabella in the um, YWP community and, and for many of us here as well. Um, I want to follow up that thought with a question, not to our speakers, but to our participants. Knowing these opportunities are present, how do you feel or what do you think you should be doing um, in the coming year to take advantage of these opportunities? Whose doors are you going to knock on? And if they open the door, what are you going to ask them? Yeah, that is a really, really good question to see like the responsibility also lies with all of us and, and how we can push this forward. Yeah. The opportunities are there. Um, here you have examples of organizations and let's say, uh, adult organizations and youth-led organizations that are trying to, to increase and enhance the participation of young water professionals. But at the same time, we need people that are interested and that are keen to, to take the responsibility and, and do the work. So yeah, I, I want to hear from, from the participants on this. I would just love to randomly take people off mute I hear from you, but um, please feel free to share your thoughts um, about, let's call it our, 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 our water resolution for 2023. What is that New Year's resolution that we're going to do for, for the sector as young people? Well, Yang, from my side um, and what and from the IWA side, I can definitely say that we'll be pushing forward this agenda. We have the fellowship, we have the activities that are planned uh, during the UN Water Conference. We are already in discussion with key uh, partners. Then we have the New York Water Week that we will be there. And then um, the Grand Water Summit. I think that next year it will be something else. But IWA is also organizing other events around the globe. And we are pushing to, to include YWP is in the program committee. Uh, so definitely something that we are keen to, to continue working on this. So this is our vision for next year. <laughs> I love it. And we all look forward to amazing things from, from the YWP community as you've led us, Isabella. Um, of course, with the help of the steering committee. Jacob, if I could ask you to, um, putting your thoughts here as the chair of the steering committee what exciting things can we expect um in the coming year or perhaps in the coming years what is um the call to action from the steering committee thank you very much yang um i think um i wasn't at cop but at um 
and and both the summits too. But at this stage, I I feel like I knew everything that happened there. So um, I think moving forward into the next year, as Isabella mentioned, IW has a lot of activities that um, they'll be looking at, and some of them will be in line with what have been discussed here today. So I believe um, as um, young professionals, we also have to contribute our quota. And I also encourage everyone to take advantage of the toolbox that Mahmoud talked about. And, and let's see how best we can collaborate and support each other in the various initiatives that we are engaged in in the wash sector, especially with what was discussed at COP and with the groundwater issues. Thank you, Jacob, very well said. And that's really the, um, the a, a good way to um, help each other out because we can offer these resources, tools, and platforms, but we also need to support these platforms because they were created with the best of intentions. The only way to make use of them uh, in impactful and meaningful ways is to really engage with these uh, tools and resources. Jim, I see your hand is up. Yes, I, I, uh, I raised my hand. Okay, thanks ahead. so much. So, yeah, hello, this is Jim from Japan as a UNESCO International. And uh, this year, I also attended the COP27 and answer uh, nice, uh, nice World Water Summit in Senegal. And also attending to the many of the conference related to the waters and, yeah, including the Grand Water Summit. And that time, I, uh, yeah, my, my, my the government also need to the change to the their ideas for the the water engagement, especially the focus on to the some groundwater resources management, uh, uh, strongly connected to the international rivers. And for the next years, as a youth members and youth groups, we going to the bring to the some of the uh, proposals and countermeasures based on the, some analysis of the uh, from the science scientific data to the UN uh, 20, 2023 uh, UN Water Summit as a game changers members of the programs. And also the after the sessions we also going to the bring to the some of the, the results for in uh for um uh, from the, the Asia Pacific water water forums uh in, in my country. And that time we had already discussed the, some of the technological development and system development, and going to propose for some funding funding initiatives uh, for the creations based on the result from the loss and damage uh, funding, uh, funding funding capacity buildings into the decided, decided into the COP twenty seven. So, as I use need to have got some some more information to engage and still. Based on the information about some special accreditation selection is highly competitive uh, compared to any other conferences. So I guess maybe we need to collaborate with some civil organizations who have some uh, seekers to attend on online or in person in, at the UN headquarters. So that's my opinion. Thanks so much. Yeah, may Thank I you, comment Jean. on this? Go ahead, Isabella. <laughs> Thank you. So Jen, um, I agree with you. I think that it's going to be a, a huge competition to receive this special accreditation. And just to remind that this is up to the UN agencies, not that the partners organizations are responsible for, but what we are um, discussing with the organizations and, and also uh, trying to, to create like partnerships. And the UN will be in a hybrid, so if you're not able to be in New York, because um, we understand that some of people, they are not received the visa. We know that US has the situation with visa. And it's also, uh, the costs are quite high to go to New York. So there's going to be some hybrid events. Then you can participate online. I think that this is, is, is really good that they are pushing this um, hybrid conference mode. And, and then in terms of receiving uh, the badges, uh, you cannot go as individuals, only organizations can attend, organizations and governments. So you can try to, to find um, organization that already received the special accreditation, but also organization that has this uh, consultative, cons consultative status with ECOSOC. There is a huge list online that you can um, check. And you can reach out to them if you see one that is from your country. 
you can reach out to them saying that you are interested in, in attending uh, and representing uh, the country as part of the delegation. And if you have the connection with the government, uh, I think that is a good idea to say, why not include a youth in their official delegation on this? Yeah. Back to no, you. Thanks. thanks so much. And yes, uh, uh, we had we got to the, some accreditations as a result uh, for the first round of special accreditations. So we had we got some uh, attention for the, some uh, grand pass to the unit headquarters. Thanks so much. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Jin. Um, if we could go back to Isabella and perhaps Jacob as well on Diana's question. What is on the IWA 2023 agenda and perhaps focused on YWPs, I mean, not just IWA as a whole, on these three themes, ecological mm -hmm. biodiversity, indigenous communities and knowledge, empowering women in the water sector? I think that the IWA has activities related to all of this, not only because they are related with our strategic goals that I mentioned in the beginning of my presentation, but also because we have more than 50 strategic, uh, specialist groups that deals with all those, uh, all those issues. And they're the ones uh, producing uh, scientific knowledge, leading the change and being the leaders in, in, in this topic. So Diana, I do suggest that you check all the lists that we have for specialist groups, you can find this information on our website. I can uh, add this here in the chat later. And feel free to reach out to their management committee and, and ask about what they are producing on this. For, for example, regarding um, women uh, in water, uh, how we empower women in, in water, besides um, the uh, DAI, strategy that the IWA have. We have the SG, the specialist group on sustainability in the water sector, and they are responsible for organizing these activities that highlight women in, in the water sector. And one of the things that I like from them is that they really include youth in, in their management committee. Um, Arlinda was one of the previous chairs of the YWP steering committee and she is in the management committee of this SG and she is really keen to support youth engaging the discussions and the discussions about um, youth women uh, in the water sector but then it's, it's just an example about how we are pushing this and uh, another one we have the Senate action program that was recently la launched in Copenhagen and they also touch in all these topics that you put in your question. That's exciting, Isabella. Um, if I could for a moment just turn the question back to Diana, um, because I see in the chat box that you will be joining the IWA to learn more about the specialist groups. Um, Diana, what are you looking for in terms of uh, knowledge, training, and professional development in these in these topics, so that perhaps um, if we couldn't find it in the IWA library and gold mine of resources, perhaps it's something really for for IWA to start considering to develop. Thank you so much for your question. Uh, I am a chemical engineer. I work for the North Carolina government. I do work protecting water resources and biodiversity and indigenous communities. So that's why I, I asked that question. And right now, one of my focus is to be able to learn on, you know, the like flood management. And, you know, that, that's, that's one of the things that I'm, that, that I'm more interested in. But the things that I mentioned in my questions, those are like my top, top priorities right now. So I, wanted, I would just wanted to know from you guys what, what you had on the agenda. But yeah, I haven't really explored much the IWA website. I'm very focused on my work on these days, <laughs> right now, driving, <laughs> moving to places. So, but yeah, it was good to be able to join for a little bit and, and, and good to meet you all, okay? Hope to see you in IWA 2023, in, well, in the UN 2023.
It sounds great. Thank you, Diana. You you will find tons of good stuff in IWA, both in the digital um, libraries and database, but also in person meetups, conferences, um, and uh, other places that uh, IWA has partnerships with. I see an interesting comment here from Anik that I'd like him to explain a bit for us. This sounds like your three New Year's water resolutions, knocking on IGOs and NGOs, ministries, and YWPs in your circle. What does what do these concrete actions mean to you, Anik? Um, okay, so I wasn't expecting that follow-up to explain it. Well, uh, okay, I'll just explain it. Okay, so knocking IGOs and NGOs, so these form a big part when it comes to, you know, conserving water, and getting information. So talk about the Global Water Partnership or talking about um, the, the CCK, the Climate Change Knowledge Portal, the World Health Organization and all those bodies. So it's really important that we, um, that we look and seek uh, the support that, we, that they have to offer us. And um, while searching for the support internationally, we should not really forget that uh, there should be some kind of support nationally also, and there should be some NGOs who would be working in the water scenario. So we should also get to them and and uh, talk to them that, okay, we need these resources. Can you help us with these? Uh, can you can you share it with us, for example? So uh, the second one is knocking the ministry. Um, it is just very rare that we find out someone from the government, someone from within the power who can actually focus on the youth. And luckily I found one person. So he is on my to-do list for the year 23 to pursue him and to uh, get him include us on every policy that they are going to make. Probably so a a at least one or two recommendations should be reached out onto the fora uh, from the youth. And then knocking the YWPs in my so called. So, okay, um, I, I do not take offense in this, but uh, when you talk about water, we are usually referring to the people in hydrology, in civil engineering. I said, no, do not talk about engineering at all. I mean, that's, that's, that's so old fashioned. Talk about mechanical engineers in, in water, talk about law and uh, lawyers in water talk about the climate financing and bankers in, in water. So yeah, I mean, you should get up out of the couch and really start to row the boat to see how deep the water is. That's a great to-do list, Anik. And if there's anything that your YWP family can um, do to help you and support you in these, in these very concrete actions, you know who to reach out to. That is perhaps a great way to end this open forum on such a high note and such an inspired um, note. Thank you all for your participation in this uh, discussion. I now turn you over to Isabella for final closing remarks. Yeah, I'm having issues with the connection here. We could hear feedback, Isabella, but I think um, yeah, the microphone is uh, from Maria's side would do well if you could turn off your um, speaker from the other side. Yeah, now we're back. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I think that is working now. <laughs> awesome. Yes, it is. Like in the final minutes, I have problems with <laughs> sharing the screen. So um, I was not able to share the final slides on this, but I want to thank you everyone for coming today. It was a pleasure meeting some of you, seeing some familiar faces, but also new faces. And I do invite all of you to, to join IWA, to follow our activities. I've been, um, I, 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 people know me as sending all the mails. <laughs> sharing other opportunities, but also helping young water professionals to create new chapters and to engage with the other programs and that IWA is offering. So feel free to reach out to me in case you need it. And you have here members 
from the wider pre-steering committee, but also members from counter chapters. And if you don't know if in our region or our country have uh, a chapter, I can try to, to put you in contact with the chair or the, the engagement officer that they have, but also helping you to create a chapter in your, in your region, for example. And yeah, I think that's it. And thank you once again for coming. And Young, thank you for being this amazing moderator in this session today. And for the speakers, thank you for presenting and contributing to this event and to share your knowledge and your experience in these two uh, events that we had in the water sector. Thank you very much, Isabella. And um, it's been a pleasure being your host and moderator for this final get together. Hope to see you in the new year. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. <laughs> see you all. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.